Hey cunts, don't forget to click the subscribe button. We have already covered that portion of the seven steps. The um, probably the most difficult, one of the most. They're all difficult for for almost everybody, but one of the most difficult is getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Because all our lives, all our social mores, etc., etc., that I've pounded to death vis-a-vis your parents and your family, teach you not to be do that. Uh, I.e., don't charge into the gunfire. Stay safe. Keep your head down. You know, don't make trouble about it from, from the day you started in little junior school or wherever you start all the way up. The, um, uh, but focusing on the ends and not the means, uh, the, um, is, um, it's hard when you can't pay your rent. And, uh, some of you could lose some weight, but I've eaten too much, but I mean, uh, but we've had guys, uh, lose 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. Because they didn't have enough money to eat. And they gave their food to their families. I don't think there's going to be anybody in this group that uh, has to suffer that. Although three or four of you could suffer it, but I mean, the, uh, uh, myself included. Um, and the, um, and you think that, say, uh, when I tell you, follow uh, your passion, uh, it's a lot easier to, uh, to work uh, days, weeks, months, uh, hopefully not years, uh, till you uh, make your first deal, if you like what you're doing. I've already said I'm a transaction junkie. junkie. You heard Simon Bell say he's a transaction junkie. We can do anything. We like to hunt for deals. Uh, but uh, when it's lonely out there and you don't like what you're doing, like where you are currently now, many of you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. If you were happy as Larry, you wouldn't be here. Um, but not everybody likes bedpans. I understand that. I don't like bedpans myself, although I've done a couple of the big, biggest bedpan deals ever. But it's, it's easier. Not easy. It's easier when you like, have some passion. And if you love it, as Sally would say, then it's easy. I mean, it really is easy if you love what you do. Like uh, the Viking bitch, she's been in healthcare 24 years, and she likes helping people, and she likes giving back. The opposite of me, more or less, and she's just crushing it. She's just crushing it. But she would have crushed it without Corona, um, because you know she's she's a true healthcare professional. Uh, we don't have too many that come through the, the uh, stable like that. But if you like it, that's why we often, um, doctors go into the healthcare roll up because they're natural. Uh, and they get their board easier, they get the money easier, people will, will uh, uh, acquiesce to seller finance easier. It's just easier, but not easy, but it's easier uh, because of the MD after you. Uh, PhDs in uh, biotech don't have the same luxury, although, you know, in, in some cases, they're so-called doctors, um, but medical doctors have it easier. Just as if you're a veterinary doctor and you're rolling up vets, I mean, it's, I'm not telling you it's a fucking slam dunk, but it's a slam fucking dunk. It just is. Now, the... Uh, we know that there's no rules, and especially now in the new corona environment, the rules have all changed, except ours. We're just about the only model that still really is untouched. By the, the grace of Allah, destiny, call it whatever the fuck you want. But, uh, and I've pounded my chest since the middle of March when the first uh, lockdown happened, uh, that this is our time. And every week that goes by, and not that I need validation, because I don't need validation from anybody. I, I know what I'm like, and I'm spot on right on this one. 
And when we're coming into the second wave and then the third wave, and God knows how many more waves we're going to have, uh, the, uh, you're going to ride this wave, pun intended, until the motherfucking thing is only two inches tall. Right now, it's metaphorically speaking, it's thousands of feet. The wave, it's a thousand feet high. And as and I've said, those who stay focused the longest win. Now, I'm, I've never done anything more than body surf, so I don't really know. I almost drowned a couple of times doing that. But um, I I never heard of a, a, a um, surfer get off a big wave before it's done, unless he falls or she falls. And some of you will fall, and I don't know if it's really physically possible to get up on a wave after you've already fallen from it. It seems to be pretty difficult after you've been crushed by it to get back up on it the same way. But the wave is going to be there for a long, long time. Uh, and uh, we're right now, I know metaphorically when they paddle out and they wait for the wave. And that's about all I know about when they paddle out and wait for the wave. Well, we're there, and it's on us. We don't have to wait for a perfect time. A, a lot of people in this room uh, that have been in this room since the, uh, we started doing seminars in this room, and a lot of people that have been in the old seminar room back in the old days, uh, well, we're waiting for the right time. You've heard that before. Well, it's never the right time to make a tough decision. Never. Because you worry about the consequences and you worry about the failures. I was just listening to a, a snip by... Uh, Somebody sent me, I didn't listen to all the words about Joe Rogan. Somebody trying to do something to Joe, and some people are voicing their uh, support of him. And uh, as you know, I've been on his show, and he was nice to me. I have nothing bad to say about him. He's got a, he's got a great platform, and uh, I hope he gets rich. Um, the, um, but there are always going to be people that um, make fun of what you do. Uh, some of your kids that are old enough... Um, that have some of you that have kids that are teenagers or adults will think they may not say to you, it's, "He's past it. Why are you wasting your time, old timer? You know, don't you want to spend time with the grandkids?" But they don't say that. I'm pretty much the only person on the planet that says what you dare to think. But you know, down deep inside, the permutations. And the negative negativity, you know, even if they don't say it. Because you think it. The difference is, Steve, Jobs, and, uh, and uh, the guys that we're, we've been studying, and myself, we don't think that negativity shit. Because we know negative thought rubs off. Just like poorness rubs off. And virtually almost everybody in this room, their relations, vis-a-vis -vis what our end goal for gener generational wealth, all pole. You might have an odd cousin or something's got a few bucks, but for the most part, we're all from Poe folk. Poe. And you've never heard anybody talk about, other than maybe sarcastically, being a billionaire. And I didn't even, I didn't even hear the word million, and I've told you that story about the first time I saw a million was on a napkin in a bar, an officer's club in Ramstein, Germany. That was it. And the rest is history. And, um, the, uh, but all this has been gone through the first three days to help you clarify your vision. A couple of you thought that you came here with a vision that was already clear. I'm almost positive all of you have changed that vision since you've been here. Uh, it would be unusual if your vision hasn't changed. And today, this afternoon, after lunch, when we talk about affirmations, goals, etc., uh, and this, this, this castle, not this building, but this castle in the grounds, you know, uh, is, is the perfect place to have this seminar because it's, uh, it's a perfect metaphor for yesterday's dreams to become today's reality. So it's 15 minutes, 15 minutes, I wish it was 15 minutes, 15 months after I, uh, decided, I, uh, confirmed in my own mind, uh, that I wanted to live in a castle on an island, I was here. Arguably, this is not the island I had in mind, although Great Britain is an island. And Sally reminds me that to make me feel better, uh, but I thought I was going to be in an old island, an old castle on an island uh, uh, off the shore uh, of uh, Great Britain. Um, but I visualized, and for those of you that have seen my, uh, uh, my picture of me standing next to my dog, being a country gentleman, I saw that before 
way before I ever moved here. Because uh, I saw that, it was part of my, my goals and my affirmation. Me poncing around the estate, uh, trying to be a gentleman farmer. And, there, and I tried to be a gentleman farmer when I first got here. There is no such thing as a gentleman farmer. It's a dirty, filthy job. And it shows you, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know, you know, that the, I thought you just run around in your ballets, shines your boots every morning, and ponce around, you know, with your swagger stick. Well, that's what I attempted to do when I first got here, and I learned quickly. Because we raised cattle. Uh, we bought 16 prize uh, stud cattle. I didn't even buy any female cattle. And I didn't know any better. And the broker, the broker, scumbag, never told me that, you know, what are you going to do with all these 16 stud males? He's dead now. I, I wish I had something to do with his death, but he's dead now. Uh, <clears throat> and so, and then, um, and we got the, the, they were about, 200 pounds each. They were pretty big. <clears throat> and the kids fell in love with them, and so we could never sell them. So they died natural deaths. After 10, 12, 14 years, they died. Uh, but so, so I was going to raise cattle with no female cows. So I've been through that. So, but my vision of being here as a country gentleman or a country squire, or as they say here, a laird, a laird of, of the land, I had it clear in my mind. And um, some of you that have goals and you put down your goals, it was obvious that most of your goals uh, are associated with a number. The number was way too low, uh, vis-a-vis a, a dollar sign or a pound sign. And you really uh, hadn't thought it through. You hadn't thought it through. If nothing else, this seminar gives you a lot of food for thought. And uh, hopefully you'll accept most of it, but I'm knowing after 27 and a half years, you won't. And so the ones that stay focused the longest, the soonest, I now say in this day of the seminar, soonest, not just stay focused, because you can stay focused for 12 or 13 years, and I've already given you two examples, of guys that hit it out of the park finally, finally, but 12 and 13 years later, respectively. Well, I'm glad they hit it out of the park, and boy, they're glad they hit it out of the park, but fuck, that's a long time to wait. But let's look at it a different way. How long have you waited here to four? How long have you waited up to today or this week? Some of you have waited longer than 12 or 13 years. Some of you have waited 20, 25, maybe even 30 years because you didn't know what you didn't know, giving you the benefit of the doubt. And uh, you did the best you could. Just the same excuse your parents give why, why you didn't turn out better. Uh, the, um, and we've talked about the kids you uh, say, fake it till you make it. I don't like that, but perception is reality. You have two times to make a first impression. The first is when I first see you visually, and I ask you, when a hot girl or a good-looking guy walks in the room, how long does it take you to figure it out? Instantly, right? You don't have to think about it, okay? I am training you and giving you the tools by tomorrow afternoon that you can look at a deal takes me a microsecond. Because there's only five things that I look for. Actually, assuming we got the motivated self. If it's not a motivated self, I don't want to see the number. I don't give a fuck how good a deal it is. Because if the bitch or the bastard is not going to sell to me or doesn't think he wants to sell to me, we're wasting our time. We're pissing in the wind. And for you girls, it's harder to piss in the wind, isn't it? You know, it's not impossible for a girl to piss in the wind, but it's more difficult than for a guy. Okay? But we're pissing in the wind. <clears throat> so, but I, by tomorrow, when we go get ready to put your kilts on, I mean, it'll take you 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And then some of you are going to plug numbers into a spreadsheet. Then you fail. <clears throat> because as soon as you start to plug in numbers and look for a different permutation, there, is, there are no different permutations. There's only one. And that's why I can look literally a hundred deals, at, more than a hundred deals a day. Assuming I'm giving the right numbers and assuming, uh, and that's, that's a big assumption because you will fight just looking at the numbers that we're going to show you how to look at. Andrews Milner, uh, who's a star, no matter how you cut it, a little slower, uh, but a star. Um, 
on its eighth deal, I believe, or ninth, I, can't, I lose track, uh, as a financial analyst for almost 15 years. So he was fighting that at a, a pretty senior level. He was fighting that every time he looked at a deal. Now, I'm hopefully, you're not fighting it now, Andrew, but uh, as much maybe as because it's, you don't get rid of 15 years of experience, you know, just overnight. But he'd want to look at the other numbers. He'd want to look at the next page. He'd want to look at the footnotes. He'd want all these things that, because I was a financial analyst myself, all these things. The difference is I sold insurance door to door and was a financial analyst. Andreas never sold anything door to door. He couldn't give away sex to a sailor, a drunken sailor. So, but we're going to teach you how to just look at the deal. Um, but two times. Right now, most of you look okay. Until you open your mouth. And you know when you open your mouth. You already know and sense that, what do I say? And you're thinking subconsciously, and I say this because I've done this a long, long time. <sighs> Gee, I, I hope I adapt to those fucking templates. If you're not asking you that question, that question of yourself on a conscious level, I, I bet you're, my ass that you're asking yourself on a subconscious level. And just because all these people that we've had up here, up here vis-a-vis -vis, uh, webinars have been able to do it, until you do it, doesn't mean shit. And there are occasionally people that can't do it. But they're rare. They're, and so I don't, I don't talk about it other than right now. I'm going to talk about it. And so, uh, but it's doubtful that you'll be one of those, those individuals. We've had people with 80 IQ do a $400 million deal. 80 fucking IQ. Two steps above, a, above an imbecile. And a guy with 180 IQ did a $40 million deal. And you're already thinking, well, maybe he was a gifted imbecile. Or maybe he had Asperger's. I, I've been, I know this. I know what you're thinking. Well, how stupid is 80 IQ? Some of you don't know how, what your IQ is. If I were you, I wouldn't get an IQ test now. I would just, you know, I would forego for, for those because sometimes the IQ tests are false positives. Or, and so, and then you can, that's why kids take the test 200 times on my website. Thinking they're going to get a different result. Now, so <clears throat> this is on one slide what we've already talked about. And we started and we completed our dream team yesterday afternoon. Uh, the, uh, and today, um, we're going to give more examples of the dream team and getting a chairman because that's the most crucial part. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, uh, your war action plan, uh, and, um, the, uh, very little we're going to talk about internal growth, uh, or what you might call organic growth. And then we're going to talk about, uh, external growth quite a bit. And, um, we'll show you examples. And then, uh, but if you don't do six and seven, pay yourself directors, employees, you wasted all that time doing the, the, the first uh, five. And if you don't exit, now not everybody exits that does the QLA program. Some people want to build a legacy business to leave to their children, their family, etc. Those are few, but there are people that do that. Okay, not everybody does one. Uh, industry or a vertical in one industry, uh, and we have people that are doing rolling up uh, various different kind of companies uh, to build a conglomerate. Okay, we've got maybe five percent of the kids are doing that. But if you don't exit, you have it does. You're not realizing the money, and ninety-five percent of all the businesses that go up for sale worldwide don't sell. Really, ninety-five percent, because they're all asking too much money. Because they're trying to get rich off one transaction. They work 20, 30, 40 years, even sometimes more than that. And they wrongfully put all the money that they made back in their own business, because you've heard that say, told to you, well, I mean, uh, nobody knows your business better than you. Why invest in something else? Why not invest in the own business? Because you control it. 
And then you've got a business that you worked 35 years for, and you try to sell it and get rich off one deal, and it doesn't sell. It doesn't sell. Real wealth is built off a series of transactions. And I said yesterday that for the kids that are in their mid to 20s, you can do this five, six, seven times. Relatively easy. Uh, and then you exit, and then as one of the webinar um, participants said, um, the gangbanger uh, from uh, the Vietnamese gangbanger said, and I'm going to do it again and again and again. You, you start, build, exit, start again, start, build, and then you'll have uh, generational wealth. Now, we've given you some uh, examples, although I don't call 40, 50, 70 million dollars generational wealth. We've given you two or three examples of people that within a year have created 40, 50, 60, 70 million dollars to their account. Um, and for, for some people that would be generational wealth. The generational wealth to me is hundreds of millions. And, uh, uh, which I did for myself. And I've seen others do it. And on the list of the Hall of Fame, uh, the, uh, I'm not even in the top 100 or 125 guys and gals. So I've created at least 100 people that have created multiples of what I made. Multiples. And in some cases, tens of billions. Um, and they keep doing it. They exit and keep doing it. They exit and keep doing it. And we've already gone over the concept the two most powerful things are other people's money and other people. That's the leverage you have. OPM. Other people's money and other people. Uh, and the rich guys don't use their own money. And we've showed you a methodology how to use seller's finance, seller's equity as the equity in the deal. Because you're going to be asked from your chairman to every single person you're going to recruit on the dream team, to the accountants, to the lawyers, to the, um, uh, where's the money coming from? Who's got skin in the game? Where's the equity coming from? And your answer, and the answer that I've been giving for 50 years, directly or indirectly, to our professionals and or our board, we have financed tens of billions, whatever the numbers are, which is true, directly or indirectly through our board and our professionals. That's where the money's coming from. You could add, to, and the sellers, but then that confuses people when you say, well, how are the sellers going to, because we're talking about sellers, no. So just leave that one out. But directly or indirectly through our board and or our professionals. And again, it's the only game in town that you don't have to have any money. And again, when I developed this and I found it and uh, found Andrew Carnegie and copied it from Mr. Carnegie, uh, and I give him credit, I've been giving him credit for fucking almost 30 years, as opposed to all the other gurus don't give him anybody credit. Somebody once guesstimated 25% of the slides and seminars in the world today are mine. They just don't have QLA on them or my name. It might be higher. Um, and, um, and so you have all these tools. And we don't even allow you in the menu, we don't allow you to decide which tools to use. We tell you which tool, not tools, uh, which tool to use and when to use it. Because given to your own devices, you'll make the wrong decision. Sometimes you'll make the wrong decision because you're engaging in self-sabotaging activity uh, and you don't know it. Not everybody that comes to the seminar um, believes they deserve to be wealthy. You hear a lot about it. They, they show you uh, uh, adverts, uh, commercials on television. Some poor little black kid in Ethiopia, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but whether he makes it to London or not, nobody in that village knows, and probably nobody in that village cares. Some of those people are happy in there. If they've got water, clean water, food and shelter, and they can procreate, most everybody's happy. And it's the do-gooders that think that they're unhappy, so we're going to change your life. A lot of the, uh, those people, nobody asked you to change my life. 
And Sally and I have been in Rwanda, we've been in Ethiopia, and we've been in all these places, and we've been in the villages. And if you go back five, six, seven, eight, ten years, uh, the show us in these villages, and we, we, we sponsored schools, and we've done all that stuff. And we sponsored school, and they stay there. They don't come to London. They don't come to fucking Newark. They don't fucking come to Dallas. They stay there. Because they're no different than you. They don't want any fucking change either. All they want is clean water, and they deserve that. And a place to go to potty. And not in the clean water, which a lot of them are going potty in the clean water. So you've been given these things. And um, when you associate your goals and affirmations, which we cover after lunch, with something hopefully you're passionate about. But even if you're not passionate, remember, just as the boards are in transition, your idea probably is going to be in transition. And so we call it, if you don't, if you hate, you start in bedpans, you start in whatever, and you hate it, then you pivot. Pivot is a complete change to another industry. Some of you will just morph. Morph meaning changing, let's say you're in bedpans and you don't like bedpans, so you change to chiropractic or something in the healthcare or vet. Uh, uh, but most of you that change from the initial idea you had will only morph. You won't pivot. Uh, I'm not telling you not to, to pivot, but you just, you'll stay you know, uh, well, I kind of like, how I, I got to find something in healthcare I like. And so you'll stay there. And more uh, crematoriums are healthcare. Nurseries are considered, nurseries, not the way you grow plants, but nurseries where they take care of kids and stuff, that's considered healthcare as well. But all this information that you've gotten heretofore only works if you just fucking do it and pull the trigger. Otherwise, it's like all the other seminars you've been to uh, or all the other uh, uh, podcasts that you've listened to and all the other books, etc. It's no different. It's no different. Other than with no qualifications or reservations, I can, I can tell you with my hand and where my heart, I for sure you I had a heart, is they work. But until they work for you, it's still a statistic. Once it works for you, then it's not a statistic because it's 100 percent. It's you. It's you. Uh, and um, but those who stay uh, focused the longest on the fewest and, and pull the trigger the quickest um, earn the uh, the uh, money. Not earn like an income, but uh, create a generational wealth. Um, and we do have kids that create wealth, and then lose it. And, and, and I'm not suggesting that that's a, a good part of the, the, the model, but now you know you know how to do it. Once you stop feeling sorry for themselves, and, you know, they uh, dust themselves off, and uh, you know you can do it again. Uh, now, you realize uh, there's not that many animals on the earth that have the capability of feeling sorry for themselves. Uh, nobody does it better than a human. Although our uh, big dog, Lola, has got the hump, as they say in this part of the world. Uh, she's pissed off because people aren't paying enough attention to her. Other than barking at you and uh, a couple of people that she's seen around, she's got the hump. She'll, when you leave in a couple of days, she'll be happy as fucking Larry. Because then she can prance around the whole estate, the whole castle, and pee wherever she wants, whatever. And then uh, as opposed to somebody orchestrating where the hell she goes. Our older dog, who's 15, the boxer, he knows that you're going to leave eventually, so he's not too bothered. You know, I've seen him come and I've seen him go. He probably is thinking, uh, which is true. He has seen a lot of them come and go. Uh, the uh, so now uh, we're going to get down to more of the short strokes, uh, and again, uh, the uh, we will answer questions. And we will, uh, uh, we hammer, uh, the chairman and the board and, and, and the, uh, motivated seller because, or excuse me, we hammer the, cha the, the chairman, 
the motivated seller and uh, the uh, the banks, because those are kind of the, the the pegs or the legs that the the stool the QLA uh, stool stands on. Because if you if you pick a bad chairman, you have to be willing to change sooner than later. And as you heard uh, the Viking bitch say when she was got rid of her uh, chief operating officer, I mean, she made excuses. She took, you know, she actually called against our rules. She called one of the really qualified kids that I trained here, experienced M&A guy who happened to be in her group, uh, which you're not supposed to do, to, to help her walk through how she was going to fire the guy. Uh, and then it took 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds. All the consternation, all the worry she had, it took less than 30 seconds, and he was a professional. And that's it. Um, and it's the same when you're taking stock back. These guys are not worried about having 2% of your fucking dream. Remember, right now you got nothing. You got 100% of zero. That's a bit of an exaggeration, because some of you have some money. Uh, but... Um, they're, so they, they're, they're not going to fight with you. They just don't. It doesn't sound logical why they, something that's worth something they're not going to fight over because most of the people don't, don't either have the time or the temperament and sometimes the money to fight. So even if you have the money to fight, you, you know, litigation, even though it's a business tool, I'm very good at it, um, is time consuming and it can suck, it will suck the energy. Uh, out of your QLA uh, march. And so uh, I'll get a call or I got an email a couple of days ago. Uh, this guy has cheated and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, um, what would you do? I said, five more acquisitions, I would tell you to go after the guy. But now you've only got one acquisition and, you're, and you've got the model where you understand uh, what you're doing. I, I'd wait. And there is normally a limitation of time lapse where as long as you assume within three years or one year or seven years, you can still go sue them. So you ask your in-house lawyer, what's the statute of limitation on this? And, he, and they say five years. Well, then that's good. So, you know, we'll go back and get him in two or three years. And um, the, um, last night you saw Steve, which is, he's iconic. Uh, he's bigger than life. I haven't spoken at Oxford like he did. Uh, he said uh, uh, he was nervous before he spoke because he realized this was going to be on YouTube. He's another guy that uh, likes to use four-letter words, and I believe he didn't say one bad word in his talk at Oxford. So what are the takeaways about uh, C Mr. Balmer? Yes, sir. Um, don't sit around with a thumb up your ass and just take action. Gee, that sounds familiar. I mean, which is true. Which is true. What else about Steve? Yes, sir. Learn how to hire and fire people quickly. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Oh, God damn. I wonder why I, I, I gave that film to you to watch. What else? Yes, sir. He changed his DNA. He was painfully shy, he mentioned, and then um, he was hanging around the football team, and they would have they fucked him for practice if he didn't grow a pair, to say the least. Well, all these guys are fucking for practice. You know, uh, Gerard said, stand up like a man. I mean, uh, in a very New York way, he said it. But it's true. These guys will take, they will take your, your nine-year-old virgin daughter from you and fuck her for practice. All these guys are the same. Success leaves clues. All these guys are 99.999% the same. They're all tough. Even though 98% of them are introverts. You can be a tough introvert. These, these guys, uh, now, Steve Ballmer is an alpha male. So, so far, he's the only alpha male other than myself that you've heard. Uh, uh, Gerard is an alpha male. Uh, what else about uh, Steve? Yes, sir. Put your heart, body, and soul into everything. Your goals, your life, everything. 
I've never seen a part-time high-performance person. I'm 75 years old. I've been doing this about 50 years. I've never, ever, ever seen a part-time high-performance person. They're either all in. It's like in, in poker when they go, I'm all in. Okay? That's what this deal is. If you're going to make it work the best for you. Yes, sir. If you're a one-trick pony, you're a billionaire. And if well, I, I, I pray, I don't care if you get the second trick. I just pray you get the first trick. Uh, you know, it's, you'll satisfy Dan Pena, senior here, if you get uh, one trick. But I've got a lot of guys that are two, three, four trick ponies. Because um, once you learn how to win, and it becomes fun, you want to keep winning. And most, for those that, the first thing that they've ever done in the winner's circle is doing deals, then you never want to do anything else. You don't need Dan to be kicking you, you know, we got to get these deals done before the year end. We, we don't have to, we have to have Dan kicking you knowing that 75% of all deals, commercial banking deals get done the last part of the calendar year. You just want, you want to do it because of the, of the endorphins that it releases. I mean, uh, the, uh, the feeling good about yourself, uh, which, you know, you may or may not have ever experienced. Um, and I know the, uh, you know, ath not athletics aside, because I wish I'd been a great athlete like my dad, but I wasn't. Uh, I mean, athletics aside, I know there's one thing I do better than almost everybody on the planet. And I still like doing it. Here I am, 50, 75 years old. Uh, because I know out of this group, uh, you will react more slowly than I did, uh, more slowly than some. But, you know, when you're a multimillionaire, you know, one or two or three years from now, uh, not that I need the validation, um, the, uh, you'll wish, some of you have already said I wish that I had known you 20 years ago. I was here 20 years ago. But anyway, the, uh, so uh, it's not like I wasn't here. We've had some real old gifts that, God, I wish I knew you 40 years ago. 40 years ago, I was around, but I wasn't doing this. I was, I was as they say, trading for my own account in those days. Um, the um, Being a winner, it's like I, I said yesterday, the day before, I can't really recall the last time I lost at anything. Uh, whereas most of the kids come here have to think hard about something that they won. Uh, but now... 45 years ago, or 40, whatever it was, you know, I had uh, jail, incarcerated, uh, the, uh, flunking out of the university at least three times, arguably a fourth time. Uh, the, but I didn't get it a, uh, I didn't get a dismissal notice the fourth time, so I don't count that one. I talk about it though. I'm, you know, so you can say I flunked out of school four times. Um, the, uh, one of the saddest days of my life, and I and I'm, I don't believe I've ever been depressed, is the two days our two sons got arrested and got thrown in jail in, in the same cell block that I had been in, in County Jail, Los Angeles. The same motherfucking cell block. It broke my heart. I mean, I just said, fuck. Oh, God. And uh, I'm trying to stay positive with the boys. Uh, but they had seen... Daddy, and heard about Daddy, going to jail, getting in trouble, rising like the phoenix, which I did. So, so they caught me. I went to jail. But fuck. For those of you that are parents, I still get chills just thinking about it. It broke, it broke my. I knew I had a heart thing because I felt it break. I felt it break. I mean, it cracked in half. Uh, but. Uh, but they it turned out. So, but the Kelly, our daughter, says, I'm not stupid like the boys. I don't have to go to jail to prove anything. So, and in that regard, Sally, Sally and I do believe that Kelly is the uh, sharper because she didn't have to go to jail. Uh, and as far as I know, I don't want to know any other information, Kelly. She never did anything that warranted going to jail. If you did, honey, just keep it to yourself now. You're, today's her birthday. Happy birthday. You're 30, you're, you're, you're 34, happy birthday, I don't need to know, okay? Just keep that information to yourself. Uh, although the boys say, 
Dad, did you? I don't want to know. I don't fucking want to know. I don't part, you know. I'm going to go to my grave thinking, that, you know, uh, she's not made it some goody tissues, but uh, okay, what else about uh, Steve? Yes, sir. Fail often and rapidly. What else? Yes, sir. He's very passionate and, and enthusiastic about what he does. Well, for the most part, with one exception of the webinars, all the kids are enthusiastic. Again, just as I said, I've never seen a, a part-time high-performance person. I've never really met a person, even introverted and shy, that wasn't enthusiastic about what they were doing. That's why if you do something, or when you do something that you like, it's easier. It's not easy, but it's easier. Because there are going to be rejections. You know, as, uh, as the uh, Vietnamese gangbanger said, you know, they get through the rejections. Uh, and especially when his family, which he's now disassociated himself with, are telling him how successful he was because he had a little construction business. And, from, and for the American dream, coming from Vietnam, he was successful. He was. I mean, and that's what you're supposed to be able to do when you come to America. Or in some cases, come to Canada. And, or well, not America, North America, because he's from Canada. Or you come to the UK. That's what the model's about. Now, in my opinion, the model isn't that you let nine million, uh, you know, people from other countries, um, that, uh, are sick and lame into the country. That's a whole other story. I give a whole seminar. I, I'd love to speak in front of the United Nations about that. Telling them what the fucking Lord knows. Um, what else about Steve? Yes, sir, in the back. He said, get new muscle. Pardon? He said, get, develop new muscle. Correct. Develop new muscle. Now, there, there's some of the slides you're going to get are uh, describe, uh, we don't go through them in the seminar, describe him uh, being taken to court. You know, when he's beating one of the programmers, trying to throw him out a window. I personally saw Steve Jobs throw a, a computer at a, a programmer years ago. And now, can you imagine trying to throw a programmer out a fucking window? You can't imagine. I think, you know, we should uh, go back. Okay, YouTube, thank you.